When it comes to Milky Way photography, unless you are stacking your images, you are going to be very upset with how noisy your images end up being. A single frame is great, multiple frames is better, less noise looks beautiful, and cleaner work overall. I use two different applications to stack my photos. One of them is Starry Landscape Stacker, which is pretty straightforward and easy to use. The other option is Photoshop, which is a little more intimidating, but once you get the hang of it, you will be thanking yourself that you learned how to use it. Before we get started in Starry Landscape Stacker or Photoshop, the first thing that we want to do is prep our files in Lightroom. So to do this, we're going to go under the Develop module. And then with one of our images selected, we want to bump our vibrance and saturation up so that we can level out our white balance. I see that it's a little bit underexposed before I do this, so I want to bump my exposure up just a little bit. I want to first start with bringing my temperature up so that it's a little bit more yellow. And then I want to bring my tint down just a little bit so it's a little more purple. And then once I have those both set, I will reset my vibrance and saturation back to zero. And I will start working on my uh, basic adjustments. First, I'm gonna do my highlights and raise them just a little bit. I'm gonna bring my whites up just a little bit. And I'm only working on my sky. I'm not gonna be working on my foreground. I have another video that talks about editing your foreground, so I'm gonna ignore all of this for now. Um, so I could just bring my shadows down and I could bring my blacks down too, which is going to give me a little more contrast. I'll bring my contrast up just a little bit too. Uh, with the tone curve, I'm going to raise my blacks a little bit, drop my shadows and raise my highlights just a little bit more. Um, I might even just bring the shadows and blacks up again, just so it's a little bit more even looking. I'll raise my clarity just a tiny bit, and I'm going to play with my saturation, so raising the orange, raising the yellow, purple, the magenta, as well as the blue too. Um, and then I'll raise my vibrance just a little bit, and then scrolling all the way down to lens corrections, I will remove chromatic aberration. Now the reason I don't choose enable profile corrections too much anymore is because I have seen with stacking images before you get this moray pattern effect that goes on that looks kind of like a uh, distorted checkerboard. I try to avoid this as much as possible. There are situations where I wish that I could click the enable profile corrections, but when it comes to Milky Way photography, I found that it's easier if I don't click it and then just edit as is. <clears throat> so once I have all my alterations in, I'm going to select all of my images down here by holding shift and pressing on the last frame and then hitting sync, making sure that all of these checkboxes are clicked and pressing synchronize. Once that goes across and you can see that all of your images have been synced, you can then go ahead and export under the file menu into a uh, location and I'm gonna make this a print TIFF file. Um, and I'm going to choose a folder on my desktop uh, under Alabama Hills. I will name this folder Starry Landscape Stacker. I will create that, choose that it goes there, name this Alabama Hills real quick, and then export. And once all 10 are exported, I will import these into Starry Landscape Stacker. Once everything is exported, I'm going to open up the folder that is holding uh, the exported images 
and as you can see there's 10 of them that have exported and I will open up Starry Landscape Stacker. In Starry Landscape Stacker I'm going to file open and then I'm going to drag everything from this folder into Starry Landscape Stacker and go going to press open. Once this opens, you're gonna see a bunch of red dots that are on here. Uh, this is just trying to differentiate the sky from the foreground. You can go in and add red dots by selecting add red dots right here and going around and just kind of outlining your foreground from your, your sky. Once you're kind of at a position where you like it and it's pretty good right now, um, I'll press find sky and it does a pretty good job of selecting everything. There are spots here, 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 here that aren't selected, and then a little bit of trim, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it this time. Um, with sky under paint selected, I'll up the brush size a bit and just brush over the spots that have not been uh, selected correctly. And once I'm pretty comfortable with where, what my selection is, I will then press align and save. And then I will press save. I'll save it into the same folder with the rest of the images. So once I have saved this file, I'm gonna go into the folder that I saved it in and drag it into Lightroom. And then once it is imported, I'll just show you a side-by-side -side of a single frame versus the stacked image by right-clicking on one of the images. After selecting both of them, right-clicking on one of the images, going to Edit In and Open as Layers in Photoshop. Once these images have loaded into Photoshop, I'm then going to take the rectangular marquee tool, draw or drag a uh, marquee down the middle and do a uh, layer mask just to show you the difference between stacked and single frame. So, as you can see right here, this is the single frame, this is the stacked image. Even in the foreground that we were ignoring, single frame stacked, single frame stacked. To me, the benefit of using Starry Landscape Stacker is great if you want to remove the noise from the foreground and from the sky, but if you don't have access to the program, another alternative would be stacking your photos in Photoshop. So in order to do that, I'm going to close out of this file real quick. I'm going to go back into Lightroom. I'm going to select the 10 images I use for the stack, and then I'm going to edit these in Photoshop by going to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now once everything is loaded into Photoshop, what you're going to want to do is close the first few layers so that you're left with two. Basically you want an underlying layer which is going to be the base layer and then a layer on top of that which you're going to then go ahead and align on top of the base layer. So in order to do this, you can either reduce your opacity all the way down and try and hunt to blend those together, or you can change your layer to difference and it's gonna create this very abstract looking black and white image. Now basically, all the white that you see is the stars not lining up. So in order to get these to line up, you'll wanna free transform this layer by pressing Command T or Control T if you're on a PC and you'll see this bounding box on top. With this box selected, I like to right click and do 
warp and then with warp selected, I'll then go ahead and just kind of nudge around the corners until I have everything pretty much overlapping as to normal and then you'll go ahead and work on the next layer once you have that layer where you want it go ahead and change that layer to normal and keep going until you have all these layers done. You can select the layers you stack, right click on them, and then I would go to convert to smart object. And then once this conversion is done, you can go to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, and Median. So, just to give you an idea, I will open up one of the layers on top of it. I'll do the same Marquee Tool right down the middle and add a layer mask on top of that. So you can take a look at the difference between uh, the noise and the single image over on the left and the stacked image on the right. Now it's not as great as Starry Landscape Stacker because this is only five, this is only a five layer stack, but if you went through and did all 10, I'm sure you get very close to the same results. Now the problem though, is that with this stack, you're gonna get a little bit of movement in your foreground, which is gonna make it look a little bit sloppy. But to get around this problem, what you can do is, I'm gonna remove this layer mask and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on all the layers above that I did not stack. I'll right click them all and I'll also convert these to smart objects. And then once this is done, converting, I'm then going to cut out the foreground. I'm going to cut out the foreground and use that as a layer to composite on top of my, my stack sky. Now that it's been converted into a smart object, what I want to do is do the same thing with layer, smart objects, stack mode, uh, median. Once the median blend mode has been applied, you could then select both layers and rasterize layers with keeping only the top layer selected. Go to color range under the select menu. Use the eyedropper tool to select your foreground. Use the fuzziness slider to select as much foreground as you can. Press OK. Apply a layer mask to this. And then with the layer mask applied, because there was some of the sky that was also selected, you can use your brush and brush in the sky from your stacked sky layer. At this point, you're pretty much done with your editing. The only other thing that you could do is take your blue hour shots um, and blend in together with your Milky Way sky for a nice seamless edit link to that previous video is below.